Woo! Congrats to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. You did it. You became the president and the vice president of the United States. Well done. Now, as you know, I have analyzed and scored and given you lessons from Joe Biden, Donald Trump and Barack Obama. Now, I haven't analyzed Kamala yet, but I'm just about to because I had a look at her victory speech and it's... Hmm. It's very interesting to say the least, and there will be loads to learn from, from that. And as the three others, I have done this. I have scored every single skill that she uses over and over again. Little twitches of her eye, movements of her elbows, every single thing in order to bring out that score to see how does she measure up compared to Trump and Biden and Mr. Obama. Now before I give that to you, I just want to put it like this. When I analyzed the three gentlemen, I analyzed their acceptance speeches. Kamala's speech is a victory. Victory speech. So victory speeches usually give the opportunity to show off more skills. So they give the opportunity to get a higher score, for instance. So we're gonna have a look at that. Before I begin, I just wanna make it clear to you that there is no political statement in this at all. I am just looking at her communication skills purely. Are you with me? And to the woman most responsible for my presence here today, my mother, Shamala Gopalan Harris, who is always in our hearts. Good start. She starts by spreading serotonin in the audience by paying respect to her mother, showing that she's human. I like that. Now see if you can see the sign of weakness that she's showing in the beginning. It's called the peacock effect. We've seen it before in both Donald Trump and in Elon Musk, actually. Today, my mother, Shamala Gopalan Harris, who is always in our hearts. You can see the flapping elbow. That is called the peacock effect. Humans usually do it when we want to become larger and bigger in front of whatever we have in front of us. So it's usually a sign that we're feeling a little bit small, a little intimidated, a little bit scared, which I think is just natural being in the situation that she's in. Oh my God, like, hey, you just became the vice president. You got to now talk to the entire world. Go up there. I think a bit of flapping on your elbows is probably pretty common. She maybe um, didn't quite imagine this moment. Still flapping? But she believed so deeply. Shakes her head in disbelief. Good amplifying head movement. Where a moment like this is possible. Mm, another amplifying head movement. Well done. So I am thinking about her and about the generations of women, black women, Good strategic pause, good smile. She launches off a Duchenne smile. White, Latina. You see that? Where she activates her orbital ocular ocular and her sigmatic major, which is defined as a genuine smile. I like that as well, nice. Who throughout our nation's history have paved the way for this. Paved the way, that's an elongated vowel. We saw that in Barack Obama, several occasions. Women who fought and sacrificed so much for equality. Using a functional gesture. Nice. And liberty and justice for all. Power of three. Bam, bam, bam. We listen to that again. For equality and liberty and justice for all. All the women who have worked to secure and protect. Very good base pace. Base piece, pace means that you go in a particular pace which gives the, allows you to go up in pace when you need to and allows you to go down when necessary. 100 years ago with the 19th Amendment. Like that little lean forward that is called a horizontal shift. Even if you're sitting in front of a camera, this makes a difference. And standing on stage, it makes a difference as well. It makes you focus on the person more. It should be used when you say something that is more important than anything else that you're saying. Five years ago with the Voting Rights Act and now in 20. 20 with a new generation of new women. elongated vowel again in our country who cast their ballots and oh squinting her eyes adding a facial expression to what she's saying like she's going into something more serious new generation of women in our country who cast their ballots it's like she's clinching her fist as well as a functional gesture to that new the fight for their and an amplifying head movement right to vote and be heard it's good she is good i am I'm thrilled. Tonight I reflect on their struggle, their determination, and the strength of their vision. Again, power of three. As even an anaphora, she begins each and every sentence, all three of them in the same way. To see what can be unburdened by what has been. And I stand on their shoulders. As a metaphor, I like that. Whenever you're 
delivering a speech in front of a camera or on stage like this. Use a visual language, whereof metaphors is the by far strongest tool you can use in your communication skills. What a testament it is to Joe's character that he had the audacity. Audacity, ooh, the, the emphasis and the prosody of how she said that, that was so good. The audacity. Audacity. What I mean with that is that she's got a word and she says it in exactly this, the, the way it should be said when you say long, short long, short. You say it in the same way as the word bears value. Well done. One of the most substantial barriers that exists. Distinct gesture. Mm -hmm. In our country and select a woman as his vice president. Well done for that. This, this is historical. I can't believe it. this is so inspirational. Vice president, woman. Woo! What she's doing very well is I know I had a look at the debate between Biden and Trump. They tended to look into the person that was interviewing them constantly. She's really good in alternating her eye contact toward the audience standing on cars all over the place and into the camera. Very skillful how she divides her eye contact. Goes straight head angle, stares into the camera and uses a distinct gesture, everything adds up, very synchronized. Our country has sent you a clear message. Functional gesture. Aim with ambition. Lean. Amplifying head movement. We will applaud you every step of the way. Oof. That's a powerful part of this speech. The American people, no matter who you voted for. Ooh. Did you see that? It's the first time she does it during the entire speech. Have a look at this, it's beautiful. American people. No matter who you voted for. She tilts her head first time during the entire speech. And if you've seen my previous analysis, you know that that means that you show empathy for the people that you're talking to. So as soon as she starts talking to the Republicans and everyone that did not vote, she tilts her head showing that she cares. <sighs> because now is when the real work begins. The hard work the necessary work. That's beautiful. And I, I, I do not see that that was planned because sometimes you have a person writing the script going like, tilt your head here, do this here, do that here. That did not seem pre-planned. She's got you beautiful head movements synchronized with what she's saying. Then she had an epiphora here. The hard work, the necessary work, the good work. She ends the sentences in the same way. So an epiphora is the opposite of an anaphora. Both of them creates more fluency in the language. And a president for all Americans. I want you to notice that the flapping of the elbows has now stopped. If you were really acute, you would have seen that happen about a minute in, which definitely now shows us that those were only because she was nervous and she felt that there was a threat to her, you know, obviously because of the situation she's in. But as she goes by and she's getting this applause and this race, she gets more and more comfortable and she doesn't have to boost herself anymore. That's it. That is a nice speech, especially for being spontaneously thrown up on stage. Here you go. You won. Just do it. I'm impressed. I'm going to look forward to all the speeches that she will be delivering. It's gonna be nice to look at them because she's using some really good skills. Now, let's come down to the conclusion. How much did she score? And before I show you that, I just wanna give this bit of advice to you. And that is that one thing that she did really, really, really well was that she was synchronized. Her face was moving and it was combined and synchronized with her head movements, her hands, her voice, and her words. When all of those five are synchronized, there's less discrepancy and we've got a better chance of trusting such a person. So I'll give that to her. That was her absolute strength. It was brilliant. Here we go. Boom! Scrolling, 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 scrolling through all the 110 steps. Coming down to a score of 72.5! Oh my god. I don't remember the exact scores of Biden and Trump now, but I believe they were on the 60 mark. And then you had Obama at the 80 mark somewhere up there. So she scores in the middle. But then again, I think she can do even better. I think she has the possibility to score maybe 80. Maybe if she'd got some more training, she'd probably score all the way up to 85. This was a treat. This is an historical moment. Kamala Harris as the vice president of the United States of America. Goosebumps all over my body. Thank you for watching.